Welcome to Stuff They Didn't Teach Me in Sunday School. Not too long ago, my wife and I had the opportunity to spend two weeks in Thailand and Vietnam. Fascinating trip, visiting our offices, our ministry offices in Thailand and in Vietnam. Different culture, different part of the world, actually the other side of the world. While it was great to be there, and while we learned so many things and met so many people and had so many new experiences, it was great to come home too. Once you're out on the road, you have a good time, but it always feels good to come back home. Last time we learned about the fact that there came a time in Judah's history when she was hauled off into captivity in Babylon. She was hauled off into captivity in 587 BC and she wouldn't come home again until 536 BC, about 51 years later. We don't know a lot about what happened during that time period. There's not a lot of recording, recorded history in the Bible about that time period when Judah was in captivity. There are some things we can deduce though because Judah changed when she came back. She was different. Her religion was a little bit different. Her culture was different. Her understanding of her God was different. And so we, we assume some things that must have happened during that time that she was in captivity in Babylon. 500 miles away from Jerusalem. Jerusalem's a pile of rubble. The nation is destroyed and the captives are 500 miles away from home. As you might suspect, if you live somewhere as much as 70 years, because some of those first captives went, uh, first captives went into captivity in uh, the, the 600s, if you lived somewhere for as much as 70 years, you might tend to make that your home. And many did. And when they had the opportunity to go back, a lot of the captives did not go back. They stayed in Babylon. But some did eventually go back in 536 and some other waves of returnee, returnees on down the road. One of the things we know must have happened is that the prophets that they ignored when they were alive, they paid great attention to after the prophets had died and the people were in captivity. And I suspect it must have gone something like this. They must have looked at each other and said, what happened? What went wrong here? I thought we were God's people. Why would God abandon his people and leave them in a foreign land? Oh, yeah. Some guys wrote about that. Let's dig those books out. And it appears that during the captivity, they read Isaiah and, and Amos and Hosea and many of the other prophets to find out why this all happened. They came to some conclusions that were almost right. It appears that the conclusions they came to were that they went into captivity because they didn't keep the law well enough. In reality, they went into captivity because they ignored their God and chased after other gods. That also was the reason they didn't keep the law well enough. But they didn't go back to the relationship, apparently. They went back to the law itself. And they vowed that this would never happen again. If they ever got home again, they would keep that law so well that God would never take his land back again. Well, that meant studying the law, looking into it, and, and eventually, and, and redefining it, as a matter of fact. And so the roots of the Talmud, or the, the um, Jewish exposition on the Old Testament seemed to have their roots in that exile period. As people looked at the text and said, now what went wrong? We didn't obey the law. Okay, here's this law about work on the Sabbath, for example. You're not supposed to work on the Sabbath. Well, what does that mean? What does it mean not to work on the Sabbath? So they came up with all these rules and regulations, man-made rules and regulations, about what was and wasn't work on the Sabbath. For example, medical work. Well, you could do emergency medical work on the Sabbath, that wouldn't be work. But if you did elective medical work on the Sabbath, that would be work. So in other words, if the person's ailment could wait until Sunday, then you ought not to do it on Saturday. Saturday was their Sabbath. They got so picky about the laws that they identified 613 laws in the Old Testament. 613 laws, specifically in the Pentateuch, in the first five books of the Bible. And they said, we're going to keep these, but we're going to have to define them so we can keep them so they'd find them, so they could keep them. We also see, probably in the, in the exile period, the roots of the Pharisee movement. The Pharisees are there in the New Testament. We haven't seen them show up at all in the Old Testament. And it seems that 
that centered on this, this keeping of the law and this, this uh, picky applications of the law, that that begins to give rise to this Pharisee movement that may have gained even greater um, impetus later on down the line during the intertestamental period, during the time between the Old and the New Testament. One more thing that tends to grow out of that exile period, because it's there afterwards and it's not there before, and that's the synagogue. There is no mention of a synagogue in the Old Testament up to the, up to the um, captivity time. At the time of the captivity, now remember there's no more temple. So where do these people study scripture? Where do they worship? It appears that what grows out of the exile is the appearance of this synagogue. Not as a place to do sacrifices. That, well, they can only do that at the temple. But as a place to study the law. And to study the law for the purposes of, of being obedient to God so that God wouldn't do this again. What grows out of that exile period seems to be the Judaism of the New Testament. It's not the religion of the Old Testament. The religion of the Old Testament focused on a relationship with Yahweh. Judaism focused on keeping your nose clean and staying out of trouble, keeping the law. And that's what Jesus runs into in the New Testament is Judaism. The Old Testament with a twist, a very legalistic twist. And into that setting, Jesus brings the good news of the gospel. And he is the good news of the gospel as he suffers and dies for people that can't possibly keep that whole law out of the Old Testament.